Hello and welcome to the Wednesday preview for another week. Hayden King back with you for this spring gift edition. Really looking forward to this contest coming up on Saturday night here at Cannington. Unfortunately, James Broadhurst can't be with us this week, but we'll plough on regardless. And we'll start off by taking a look at race number five. It is the spring gift on Saturday at Cannington and down in box number one, Granite Song. Scrambled through after qualifying, electrified one of the heat winners immediately outside of him. Then Dandelup Blazer Lentil Manelli solidified. The other heat winner, Runaway to Mars, is drawn out in box number six. West on Odie and Hinto round out the field. Let's have a look at the replay now of Runaway to Mars's heat win from last Saturday. Runaway to Mars beginning from box number eight here. Begins very speedily indeed. Solidified began just fairly. Got a little bit crowded there. Other qualifiers from the heat we had... Uh, West on Odie who began okay then shifted up the track into that first turn and also coming through was Granite Song after beginning okay and uh, eventually finding a little bit of trouble midfield but Runaway to Mars powering along out in front clear by two and a half mid stages solidified giving game chase they're well clear of West on Odie trying hard but Runaway to Mars runs home to score a comprehensive success there in that heat solidified tried hard West on Odie did recoup some of that lost headway late in the piece and then Granite Song was able to make it through into the final. In terms of this Saturday it's going to be hard work for Granite Song uh, down in box number one but we know he's a real grinder a gutsy battler turns up does the job week in week out he has electrified next door though the other heat winner he's the tried and true professional turns up does the job and he's got that winning streak next to his name. The picket fence continues to build. It could bode well for him as well, considering Granite Song isn't the fastest beginner. He could get that room down toward the inside, find the rail, hold up, and be very hard to beat. Electrified does stand out as the top pick in the race. Dandelup Blaze has been going so well for the last couple of months. Hard to ignore the way he's been going. Lentil Minnelli's likely to find it tough from box number four. Solidified, you know, he'll just keep coming, this dog. He'll really uh, thrive over the five. 520 in those late stages if he's close enough look out runaway to mars as i highlighted it's going to be much harder from box number six but winning form is good form but he does have that early dash to put himself up there from the outset west on Odie drawn immediately outside him and hinto who you know will always find the line as well in box number eight just a case of how far back he gets to but electrified does look incredibly hard to beat in the spring gift particularly given that likelihood he'll get that room down toward the inside outside of granite song if he can hold up early that should basically be the end of the penny section and he's likely to start a short price favorite number two electrified in the spring gift moving over now to race number six on the program on saturday and this is the Zach Minnelli at start of fifth grade over the 520 metres. West on Blossom in box number one. She can return to winning ways now. Her numerical form doesn't read well, but this looks her big chance. Fab's Max Potato now with that additional WA experience. Carter Axelrod's been going really well. Sunnyside Boy, Barrio Beast, Travis Mania, Obstropolis, a dog we'll have a look at in a second. And Disco Daisy round out the field. Let's go back to last week, Obstropolis. Had box number one, began okay here, but there was a bit of pressure from the outside and he eventually was crossed. So he had to chase pretty gamely in this race. And we know he's pretty strong, Obstropolis, but his strength was really tested because he had to recoup a couple of lengths there mid stages. But he eventually gets going, and uh, once he really hits his straps, he's a tough force to hold out of Stropolis, and he was able to overpower them. That's been a trademark of his performances recently. And although the time was pretty weak, the performance was not. Obstropolis is going to take beating in this race on Saturday night. However, there are many dangers. Weston Blossom, as I mentioned, she does have early speed. She might be able to do enough to hold up off the inside, and that would put her in pretty good stead. She got turned sideways last week from an early stage, and this looks a better opportunity. Fab's Max Potato. Stuck on gamely, looking forward to seeing this dog potentially up in trip from a 520, but with that additional experience from last week, expect a further improved performance. Carter Axelrog has been magnificent since joining Jay Jacobson. Expect him to run a, a really positive race again. If he balances up close enough, look out. He was able to manoeuvre down to the rail and began his run last time. He was flashing, flying, just a little bit too late. Sunnyside Boy's the one who could cross West on Blossom. This dog has a heap of early pace, has been racing over the 380 his last couple if he's able to find the front he could give them something to aim at barrio beast i think is the real winner 
from drawing outside of Sunnyside Boy because he could get that cover across him. And I think he's got more mid-race power, Barrio Beast, than Sunnyside Boy. He could seal the race mid-stages and leave them with too much to do. Travers Maney is going to find it tough. Obstropolis, as I mentioned, hard to rule him out. And he could get across outside the pair of those dogs that I mentioned, Sunnyside Boy and Barrio Beast early. And you know he'll be very strong. He'll be stronger than the pair of them, so look out for him. And Disco Daisy out in box number eight could actually work okay. She's got a tendency to work off the track, Disco Daisy, so it could be a winning box for her. Look, I think Carter Axelrod's going super well, but the winners from the box are the dogs like Barrio Beast and Obstropolis. So, look, I'd be prepared to take Barrio Beast each way because he has that early speed. He's got that mid-race section in him, and if he gets out in front, his, his stamina is going to be tested late, but he's going to be a tough bunny to catch. So it's a, it's an intriguing race, that fifth grade. Zach Manelli had stud on Saturday, race number six. Looking forward to that. I'll probably hang my hat on Barrio Beast. Moving across to race number eight now on the card, it's the choicechem.com.au, fourth and fifth grade over the 600. And, uh, wow, this is a, a top race, and it's the hardest race of the night for mine. Nanga Chief has had zero luck at his last couple. Gets box number one now, which is going to help him. Clifton Cruz has been going okay. Couch Surfer has been one of our preeminent stayers for a while now. Bell Violins, a newcomer to the state, ran a good second first up. Popamono, it's a dime. Round out the field. Well, I guess it's a case of how badly has Nanga Chief's confidence been dented from those recent assignments because he came back from Darwin and he ran that positive race first up back in WA and his last couple, nothing has gone right at all. So if he could jump well, put himself up there, he'd be pretty hard to beat in a race like this. But I just I don't know if he's in the right headspace given the, the amount of interference he's copped in recent starts. Clifton Cruz, we know, has probably done his best work over the 715, but 600, he'll be strong late. He does have a bit of early pace, but whether he can balance up on the front end over the 600 remains to be seen in a race of this depth. And then you've got others like Couch Surfer. He's so consistent. You know what you're going to get from him. He's going to be up there. He'll give you all his all. And... He's, he's a pretty tough dog to beat. Bell Violin was very good first up in WA. Any further improvement and Bell Violin will be right in the mix. Pop a mono. He'll drop out. He'll be flying home. Does he want 7.15 now or is 600 still his preferred trip? I don't know. He'll be hard to beat if he can balance up close and then it's a dime out in box number eight. She has led 600s in the past, so don't rule her out of being in front and that would be her chance of winning. She's pretty strong as well. So in all honesty, this looks a very tough race to dissect. I couldn't lean one way or the other in all confidence because it's uh, it's just such a tough race. Couch Surfer is the dog that's got the runs on the board, so he is probably the safe bet, but it, it looks a tough race for mine, that eighth race on the program, but I'm really looking forward to watching it as a spectacle point of view. In terms of tonight, though, the best bet, I'm going to wait till the last. Hello, Wayne. Race 11, number eight. This dog gets a, a really good box here because he likes to drop out, get wide, build up that momentum, and he'll be storming home. If he's within shouting distance, look out. He'll be pounding up to them. And this looks a really suitable race. It's a free-for-all, but it's probably down on the better free-for-alls over the 380. So hello, Wayne. I think we can back with confidence tonight. Race 11, number eight. Thanks for joining me on this edition of the Wednesday Preview. Hopefully, James will be back next week. But if you can't make it down to the track this Friday or Saturday... I'll look forward to joining you next week on the preview.